now let me show you where the engine brush gets a, a lot of power. You know, there's a function called the, uh, I believe we call it the blur vignette, where you can blur the image, which does an interesting function, but let's go ahead and do a Gaussian blur of the entire image. And just go ahead and blur it about right there. And then what I can do is I can use the undo brush to undo just part of it to really give it an interesting effect. And then, you know, I can use a, a smaller pressure to really just blend it in well. And then that looks interesting. But then what I can do is I can use this merge percent slider. And what I can do is I can say that, well, I just really want to do that. And then I can do that. And then I can undo just the train area to really blend it in. In fact, here, let me, let me go ahead and just, just do that part of it and the tracks, I'll do the tracks too. So that looks very interesting. And then what I can do is I can reverse it. So I have kind of a middle image where I blended the entire image and then I undid part of it. But then what I'm gonna subtract it and put in more of the original blur back in, just in selected areas. And so you can see it's getting uh, kind of a, almost a, a miniaturized look here with the, with, with the blur. And so that shows how you can use the undo brush in many different ways. And you can see this, is, this ended up being a very powerful way to, to play with the Gaussian blur. And you can also see it's also very, very quick. It didn't take very long at all to, to go ahead and do this. And so you can see now we have basically what looks like a little miniaturized effect. And as before, when you blur things or when you take out color, adding contrast back in can be nice. You can see that looks good. And then again, I can use the undo brush to bring back the, the brightness, didn't make that much of a difference. But you can see that, that even in my personal editing that I keep the undo brush at my disposal at all times. I don't have to be satisfied with the results of anything. I can look at the results of any operation that I do, or I can even look in the history buffer. I can look in the view undo history uh, five steps back and say, you know what, I like that better load it into memory and then use the undo brush to apply it. And so knowing that I have that gives me a lot of flexibility because I can just go ahead and change colors of, of things. Like I can go ahead and change, let's say I think this is too red and I wanna, I wanna make it a little less red, make it a little more, more of a uh, vintage sort of picture. I can go ahead and press apply, but it made the train green. And I can say, well, that's fine because I can just go ahead and undo that and bring the train back to the color that I had before I did that. And so you can see that, that it brings a little bit more red back into it. In fact, what I can do is I can say, well, I want to add some reds to the train, but then I don't want to add it to the background. And, and then I can use the fill undo brush uh, buffer and then paint the train back in. You can see it's a subtle difference, but if you go back a few steps, it turns out to be a big difference. I, I think this was having a bit of a green cast to it. And so already with multiple uses of the undo brush, you can see that I've made a pretty dramatic difference in this picture that I wouldn't really have easily been able to do otherwise. So knowing that I have the undo brush at my, uh, my disposal gives me a lot of power to play around. I'm not committed to any one particular thing. For example, what I can do is I can go in here and I can play with uh, these, fun these effects. Like I can use a painting effect or, or I can go do a duotone which access is very nice. Or what I can do is I can do a, a vintage picture, for example. And so there's my vintage picture, which also looks very nice. Actually, with the blur, it looks very nice. So I should probably put that in as a feature for, the, for that uh, vintage effect. But since I have the undo brush at my disposal, what I can do is I, I can play around because I know that I can always change the results. I can just completely undo it. I can do it, undo it by percent. In this case, I think what I want to do is I want to undo the train again. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is you can see I undid the tracks just a little bit. That was an accident, but I liked what I did. And then what I can do is I can uh, decrease the pressure and go back. What I can do is I can just, just subtly get that in there, kind of like the, uh, the effect is extending from the edges of the, of the picture. And so you can see that's a pretty interesting effect already. It even gave a more miniaturized look to the train. It seems like everything I do, I want to add contrast. Uh, I think that's just my thing. We all edit differently. And what I can do is I can go and do that and just to add some contrast. And then, you know, again, I'm not even doing this to demonstrate the undo brush. This is just what I want to do with this particular picture. Actually, I like it the way it was. And so what I have here is I have a, a vintage look. And then what I can do is, here's another aspect of the undo brush. I'm going to discuss this in another video. But what I can do is I can revert to the original image. And then what I can do is I can use the 
blend undo image, which is really kind of the same thing with the merge percent. You can't really use the brush, but then you can use this and then use the brush with the undo image later. But, but what I can do is I showed this in the video with the Thomas Kincaid painting um, style. What I can do is I can just do this overlay look and what you can see is that I can uh, go really, maybe, maybe I like that right there. And I can, I can just play around with it and get um, get various effects with it. And so that's basically the undo brush. And what I want to do is I want to show another aspect of using the undo brush with other functions. Once you use them with the noise reduction functions and other functions, it gets even more powerful. And so this is an interesting thing. And then I think what I really want to do, here's an example, here's how I can use the, the edit, uh, the view undo history where what I really want is I want the image that I had before I reverted to the original, which you can see is number 18, but number 17, I can just grab that image, and then what I can do is uh, now I have the result of the blend undo image with, it gets a little confusing sometimes. Sometimes if you get confused in the undo brush, sometimes you can just cancel out of it and start over, start fresh, and then what I can do is I can use the undo brush to just merge merge what I liked in there and then again uh, I keep adding contrast but that's that's the sort of thing that you can do with the undo brush and then uh, maybe I want to add a bit of a tone to the to the picture a little bit and I can do I can do all sorts of things I think this one for example would do well with a uh, with a soft glow might make it look nice all right and so it's, it's getting a little more a little painting like a little esoteric and so so you can see that with the undo brush, I was able to just do all of these things, and and I was able to do them very quickly. If I wasn't doing this for the sake of tutorial, I would have been able to do this in the space of three, four, or five minutes. And so I think that the undo brush really shows how it shows how powerful the undo brush is, but it also shows how it can just really enhance your your creativity in editing your pictures.